360 live from a news hub here in Accra. Now, the conditions of their children, they say, has put a lot of limitation on them. The better part of their lives is spent at home. These mothers want policies put in place to help them and their children. This is the first part of our story on cerebral palsy and the need for government to shift attention. Cerebral palsy, popularly called CP, is a disorder which affects muscle tone, movement, and motor skills. The condition affects the ability of one to move in a coordinated and purposeful way. It is one of the most common congenital disorders of childhood. CP usually is caused by brain damage that occurs before or during birth or during the first three to five years of a child's life. In developed countries, there is support for those with a condition, making caring for them less stressful for children, their parents and caregivers. But same cannot be said for Ghana. Mothers here go through frustrations and rejection whilst caring for their children. 39-year-old Malwin Amwako has an 8-year-old child with cerebral palsy. At 8, Sami cannot walk, sit well or even talk and this places restrictions on her mother. Come and see how people behave towards me. I re remember I've slapped a, a certain lady in that house because of my son, and it became of like quarrel, and the landlord told me that the lady is right. He himself, he don't understand the reason why he has set me in the house with this kind of child. So along the line, he just gave me a letter to leave the house, and I left. And I came here. So since then, I don't want a place to live where people are playing. See, that's why I'm here. You can see where I am. There is no house. And I like it like that. I need my peace of mind to move forward. Malwin tells the news team her husband has divorced her. Some landlords refused her accommodation and no school would admit her child and called for policies to be in place to forestall numerous challenges confronting her. Lois Sefako Avemega is the first child of her parents. Though fortunate to have a supportive and caring family, her condition has come with a lot of challenges for her mother. I got my diploma uh, when I was pregnant with her. But because of her condition, I wanted to do the distance education degree, but I couldn't leave her in the house and then go because of her condition. So indirectly, it, what you are saying is true. It has really affected my education in a way. Because if it had not been here, I would have just lived with my mother or she, eight years. A child is going to be eight years. She can handle her junior siblings. But here's the case, like the junior siblings are the ones who are even assisting her. Mabel is a banker but has to stop work because of a child's condition. At nine, her child cannot do anything for herself. It's not easy because this is a situation whereby you can't go to work with her, always you are in the house with her, taking care of her. So it's like with her, life is very challenging. So I wish I would have a place to take her to, at least for me to be able to work. These are the stories of just a few of the many women who have sacrificed a lot because systems are not in place to support them.